What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Uh, I've got a busy day today. I still have to make my wife's Christmas present. So that's actually going to be my next video. But before I start on that project, I needed to swap out my torch on my TIG welder. The new torch has come in. So I thought why not make a video about it and uh, go through some TIG torch basics on an air-cooled TIG welder. And uh, you know what parts are in the torch and what you need to swap out to change out your tungsten stuff like that and then how actually to replace the torch should you need to but uh, hopefully this is going to be a quick video let's just get into it so here's my weld calf torch i've had this torch since i bought the welder uh, it's got a little bit of a bend in the head probably from me overheating it uh, cracked the handle from dropping it and the uh, cords pretty wore out from dragging it on the floor and across the table So we're just gonna replace it with the new one today. Uh, we're gonna take the head apart start by unscrewing the ceramic cup Which is just what directs the gas uh, that comes out of the gas lens loosen up the back cap releases all the parts inside Here's the tungsten 332nd. Back cap's pretty simple, just has a little rubber o-ring on it, keep gas from coming out the back. Here's the 332nd tungsten that I had ground ready for steel and the collet that holds the tungsten in place and keeps it from sliding around. Last part to come off is gonna be the gas lens itself, which just unscrews easily. And that's it, the torch is pretty simple. There's not much else in it, only just a little hole that the gas comes up through. Here's this little plastic tray I got on Amazon just to help keep everything organized. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to order one for yourself. Everything's organized by size of tungsten. That's 40,000, 16th, 332nd, and 8th inch. And then the ceramic cups are over on the right. I have everything organized by a pile of new and used, and new and used, and new and used. Same thing with the cups, new and used, new and used. That way I can just use something for a while and then not you know, I know how much I've used something. This is a gas nozzle. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than a gas lens and can get in a tighter space. I think it can handle a little bit more heat. And uh, the flow out of it is also different when you compare it to a gas lens. But uh, there's definitely applications for this. I've been using a lot more gas lenses than this uh, nozzle. But uh, you can see the size difference here when I pull up a gas lens and then the cup. And there's even cups bigger than this that you can order to get more gas coverage. So it's all kind of the application of what you got going on and what you need. Here's the torch that actually came on the welder. It's a 17 series head. It's a little bit bigger. It's probably the most common air-cooled torch. This is the one that we have on the welder right now. It's a 9 series, which uh, is the same size as a 20 series water-cooled. So obviously the 17 here, the big one, can handle a lot more amperage. Uh, I've never really ran into a problem with the little one, except for when I'm maxing out the welder. My welder goes up to 185, and when I'm welding aluminum, it does get pretty dang hot. But I really just prefer the small package of the 9 Series. Plus, it's the same size as that 20 that we would use at RCR, because they had all water-cooled stuff. So there you get the advantage of having a small torch, and you can run high amperages without having to worry about heat. Here is the... I don't know, gas lens, collet body. I'm not sure exactly. I think that's what they call it. This is the actual collet, which you can see is pretty big when you compare it to uh, the 9 series collet that I'm using, much smaller. Here's the gas nozzle size difference. So you can see everything in this torch is much bigger. All right, let's get back to replacing this torch. First to get the torch off, you have to pull the handle down with just a little bit of pressure. Uh, it's not threaded or anything. It's just held on by these little rubber rings right here. Then to take the actual torch off, you need two 7 16 wrenches so you can take these two nuts loose. And uh, once you get them loose, they should just come off with your fingers. If you weren't going to replace the line or anything, you could just get your new torch, stick it right back on there, and uh, tighten up the nuts and slide the handle back on and you'd be done. But since we're replacing the entire line, we need to go down there to the welder and take that end off. Down here on the other end of the lead, we're going to grab the part that says electrode, give it a little twist to the left, and it should just pop right out. And uh, then you need a flathead screwdriver to get this little plastic nut off. Once you got it loose, you can just go ahead and just toss it on the ground anywhere you want. Uh, slide back the plastic cover and let you get to the nuts. It's just going to be a 7 16 wrench again. These pieces might be different on your welder, but uh, the part we're loosening right now should all be the same and uh, it'll screw into whatever your proprietary welder hookup is and they all might be the same I don't know but I know you got to keep this part 
and you want to keep the plastic sleeve part for the next one. So once you got the whole line off, I'm going to grab the new one. So as you can see, this is a Miller box. I know that's a little weird. Um, I'm a big fan of Weldcraft. That's what this old torch was. That's what we use a lot at RCR, which we did use Miller welders there. But uh, Miller bought out Weldcraft and actually took over the whole deal. So now Weldcraft is Miller. Um, you can see right here on the bottom of the torch, Miller, and then it says Weldcraft. So I don't know. I have a Lincoln welder and a Miller torch but whatever I like the stuff they make good products just go back down here and slide the cover back on first don't forget that or you'll have to be taking the nut back off again and then once you got that just screw your brass uh, connector back on there and snug it up I'm just gonna use my hand instead of a big wrench because I'm a beastly man and uh, get it good and snug it's brass so you don't want to kill it so I don't want to stick a big wrench on there anyway and then find that nut back that was tossed across the room, put it back on, and snug it down. It's just plastic. It's just really holding that piece from sliding back and forth. Once we got it, we're going to go ahead and stick it back in the welder. And the thing's done. Well, that's it, guys. Hopefully that was a quick little video just explaining the basics of a TIG torch. For those experienced guys out there, I'm sure that was boring, or maybe you didn't even stick around. But for those of you who did, I appreciate you. If this is my first video you've came across, I hope you stick around and subscribe. Uh, give this video a thumbs up, and leave me a comment down below. The next video is going to be a project, so I'm excited about it, and I'll see you in the next one.